Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we're going to give you an in-depth overview of Kramer Control. I'm Jeremy Ladner, and this is Kramer Today. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Excellent. All right. So let's start off with sort of the basics, maybe a, an elevator pitch, if you will. What is Kramer Control? Yeah, okay. So uh, I think in one sentence, uh, Kramer Control is a uh, Pro-AV control system that's fully customizable, um, but we leverage cloud technologies, which I think is something that really sets us apart in the industry. Okay. And what are some of the benefits as far as Kramer Control goes with using cloud technology? Yeah, so uh, I think with any control system, traditionally, um, you'll need a computer of some kind to do programming and to get it all working. Um, With a traditional control system, uh, they force you to use a certain type of computer. And and while that might might not be the worst thing, you do have to have a specific operating system because you'll be installing proprietary software that they come out with uh, in order to do your programming. Um, from that point forward, you'll have to obviously be maintaining that software as well. So anytime they have an update with new features or, or something else, you know, it's on you to, to download the newest version and keep databases up to date and all those things on your computer. Um, so then once you're doing your programming, tr- again, in traditional systems, you will generate some sort of programming files, uh, which are, you know, unique to every room or every project that you're working on. Uh, you'll have to organize those files, plain and simple. And while that sounds like something that you do every day, I think we also know how easy it is to, you know, lose a file that you worked on two years ago, and all of a sudden they are asking you for an update, and oh, I have to go find that file, um, and you know, and and pull it up to work on it. So I think that's just another thing that you're left to manage, however you manage it. And some people are are better than others. Um, I think also with uh, traditional control systems, um, when it comes to sharing projects, you know, if you're working with other people and you want to, you know, hey, can you edit this room for me or something else, uh, you know, you're sharing those program files again with someone and you're sharing them kind of in an antiquated way, whether that's through email or on a USB stick or something else where, you know, now you have to worry about versioning and did I send them the, the newest version? Now who has the newest version? Is it them or me? Uh, so I think that there's, you know, little things like that that we take for granted uh, when we're talking about Kramer control. So, um, and then, you know, just thinking about it, if you lost your computer for some reason or it broke or it got stolen, you know, you've lost all that work now. And again, hopefully you're, you're good with your backups, but um, again, nothing's built in to save you there. Um, But with Kramer Control, uh, working in the cloud, I think we do a lot of those things differently. So again, of course, we still require you to have a computer, but we we don't have any limitations on what computer that you need because the only software that you need on your computer is a web browser. Uh, Because again, all of our programming environments and all of our tools are based, uh, again, in the cloud or or on the web. Um, So any Mac, PC, Linux computer, Chromebook, any of those things can be used um, to do your programming. And in fact, because you're just signing in, uh, the computer that's closest to you at the time is really the best computer to use because there is nothing installed. You know, it's not a computer that, oh, well, I can't use my wife's computer. I have to use my computer because, uh, that's what's installed on there. So literally I could pick up any computer and just get to work because all I have to do is sign in. Um, because you're just signing into the application, uh, Kramer Control will always be presented to you with the newest, most current version of what we have. Uh, any new features that we've put out, any new drivers that we have, you'll, you're always seeing the newest version because there's no reason to update. Uh, again, every time you sign in, you're seeing the current version. Um, so yeah, and then when, when it comes to sharing with, with other people that you might be working on, again, sharing a project is just as easy as you know sharing it in our system and the next time that someone else logs in, they'll see that project as well uh, and have all, all the same access that you have. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there for a second. While you're yeah. speaking, we're taking a look at the site and there are, are literally tons of awards here for Kramer Control, which I'm sure you're all mm-hmm. very proud of. Uh, in addition to that, Obviously, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that this has been referred to as sort of a programming-free type of design, drag and drop. That has yeah. got to make a, a massive difference for someone yeah. 
obviously you don't need to invest that time into uh, learning a very specific proprietary language for coding. Drag and drop is going to open the possibilities up uh, for all sorts of people to be able to suddenly come in and, and make adjustments, make uh, changes as necessary and reduce the, the downtime, the costs associated. Maybe you can speak about that briefly. Yeah, I think that's huge, uh, and you and you really hit the nail on the head. Uh, a lot of every every control system requires some sort of you know we'll, we'll say programming, um, whether that's writing code specifically or whether that's against some kind of drag and drop system. Uh, you know, we chose that drag and drop method because we know that you know any, anytime you have to learn programming, uh, it, it's a tough task, and there's a lot of people out there who can do it. Um, but when you're really uh, talking to the masses, I think any time that we can simplify that and say, hey, let's accomplish the same task, but in dragging and dropping and, and doing all those other things, you know, I think we can probably accomplish 80 percent of what someone who's a really good code writer can do um, with just some basic drag and drop that is just easier for most people to learn. Now, there's also you know, when you're talking about programming, sometimes it's easy to do the programming right up front. But then it's, you know, hey, again, a year later, I have to go back and edit something or edit someone else's work, um, which can be even harder. Uh, and when you're writing code, there's, you know, a million ways to do the same thing. So, you know, I might do something completely different way that you would, even though we end up with the same result. Um, where with Kramer Control, because there is not that code writing and you're really, again, just using the, the system to drag and drop and, and make that happen. Uh, we probably build our projects a little more similar and it's, it's easier for me to look at your work and tell what you did and why you did it so that if I do have to update it at some point, uh, that it becomes easier. Okay. Uh, I understand basically you, you've got a brain in each room. That's part of the requirements. Once you're working on the cloud, you, you've dragged and dropped to your heart's content. You're really happy with the, with the design. How then do you sort of go live, if you will, and, and sure. get it localized into these uh, into these brains? Yeah, so um, we do a one-time provisioning process, which basically tells a physical piece of hardware that exists in the room that you are associated with this software room in, or this this room in software, right, in the cloud. Once those are paired, they're sort of just paired forever. So when I'm working in my software and I'm, you know, building um, my programming, all I need to do is, you know, with one push of a button, which we call a publish button, uh, you publish your work, it goes up to our cloud, and then the brain, which is sitting, you know, wherever it is in the world, uh, is also talking to that same cloud. And it sees that there's an update for its own programming, and it just goes out and grabs it. Uh, so that really allows us to... Again, I can be a programmer working from any, anywhere as long as I have access to the internet and that I can push work to that brain uh, wherever it is in the world uh, over the web. Uh, so it's an extremely simple process of being able to get your work into that room and get it working immediately. Uh, alternatively, we do have a, a way that if your, your processor is not connected to the internet, uh, we can allow you to download a file from our uh, online builder and you know then it's on your computer and then you can locally push it to the brain uh, if you don't have internet access. But uh, again, more and more things are, are going online these days and uh, you know we're finding a lot of acceptance there. All right, so what about dashboards? What about analytics? Everyone's asking about that. That's obviously you know where sure. things are at. We want to be able to get a good idea, an overview of uh, of what we're controlling and some uh, and some data that's coming back. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, when it comes to management, you know, we, Kramer Control does have our dashboard. Um, what that's going to allow you to do is a few things. Um, number one, you're going to be able to uh, see some analytics based on room u utilization. Uh, so you're gonna be able to look in and compare different rooms and see which rooms are used more often than others. Uh, as a programmer, you define what being a, or what a room in use actually means. Um, so that way you can find out, you know, are my video conferencing rooms being used more so than rooms that just have a TV in them um, and things like that. Uh, also, we have uh, alerts that can be pushed into a dashboard. So if there's certain things that you need to be notified about, uh, you know, you can go and look at one of your rooms and see if it has an alert available. Um, and then in addition, we can also look at every single device that you're controlling and see what the current states of all those devices are. 
Um, so, you know, if a, if a customer calls in to support and says, you know, I don't have any audio, um, you could easily go and look at the device in the room that controls audio and see, you know, what's the le volume level at? Is it muted? You might even be able to see things that, that as a user, they can't see on their touch panel. Uh, just because it wasn't exposed to them or they didn't need to see it. Um, but as a as a support person, you can go in and see those states of those devices. So I think that's also very useful in troubleshooting um, when someone's having an issue. And finally, for each individual space uh, through this dashboard, which again is a cloud-based tool, so it's something that you can see from anywhere, um, anywhere that you have access to the internet. But uh, the last thing is just what we call a live stream, and that's basically all the traffic in and out of the brain. Uh, so if you push a button on the UI, you know, it's going to send one command or, or multiple commands. Uh, we, can, we can actually see in the cloud in this live stream, you know, oh, that was just sent. This was just sent. This was just received. Uh, so it allows you, again, to do more troubleshooting where uh, if you push a button and a certain command was supposed to come out and it didn't, well, then we know that, you know, there's an issue there. Or if uh, I sent a command, but I didn't get a reply, uh, maybe I now know that that device has gone offline or something like that. So. Uh, these are all management tools, uh, which are part of our dashboard, uh, which is a feature of, of the system. Excellent. So I know that Kramer obviously has tons and tons, literally, I think it's thousands of products, but there are going to be some products that customers might have in their spaces that aren't Kramer products. And obviously Kramer has a very, very close ties and partnerships with, with Sony, with Logitech. How is Kramer Control at managing third-party devices? Sure. Uh, and again, this is something that all control systems have to do, right? I mean, uh, we all have to control third party devices and generally, generally we create these drivers, which are kind of the, uh, you know, the interpreters between our system and, and those devices. Right. So, uh, you know, I think we have about, you know, a little over 5000 drivers in our system right now. So, you know, generally when people go looking for their devices, I think they're finding uh, what they're looking for. But like you said, obviously, there's always new devices on the market. There's uh, constantly people are using different things. So, you know, we want to give people the ability to request that we add new drivers, of course. So, you know, uh, we can do that in a couple different ways. On our website, uh, we have a uh, request a driver, just a uh, form. Uh, you can fill that out. And uh, our, our team of guys who work on drivers will, you know, uh, put some priority on that device. And again, generally within you know, two or so weeks, we can get that device out to those people. Um, in addition, and this is something that, you know, is sort of unique uh, to, to some control systems, but we also give the uh, our programmers the ability to uh, create drivers from scratch. Um, we allow people to edit our own drivers. So if there's a driver in the system that's close um, and you just need to add that one command for that one thing that you need, uh, we don't prevent you from being able to do that yourself. Uh, in fact, we give you all the same tools that we use as our developers. Uh, we give those to our to our users. So again, it's not something that everybody wants to learn. Um, but if you do want to learn it, and it is for you, uh, we don't pull out any any we don't put up any barriers for you to do those things. That's that's fantastic. It's uh, the, a chance that I've had to play with Kramer Control. It's it's fantastic. It's it's intuitive. But obviously, yeah. there's going to be some learning curve. Uh, I've had mm -hmm. a chance to, to spend some time on Kramer Academy, where there are, of course, uh, the opportunity there to get certified. What would you suggest? That's, is that the best place to get started, Kramer Academy? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, we know there's obviously a lot of people that, that need to be trained on this system. And if we had to, you know, fly everyone to our headquarters or if we had to go visit everyone and train them, you know, individually, obviously that would that would take a lot of time. So, uh, you know, the best way to go get trained is, uh, like you said, to go on to our online uh, Kramer Academy and you can get the Kramer Control certification. Uh, Kramer Control is one product that does require certification to, to use the product. So if you are looking to be um, to at least do programming, you know, that you do have to pass the certification course uh, before you can really get in and have full access to the system. Um, but doing it online is great because you can do it at your own pace. It's it's on demand. You know, if, if you're a night owl, you want to sign in at midnight, you know, of course, go ahead and do it. Um, so yeah, you go at your own pace. Excellent. We, we've got a couple minutes left before we have to go. Uh, I know that uh, uh, that obviously we're living in 
a different world and a new reality, if you will. We have a lot of people working from from home, and there is the yeah. concern for employers who might be sending out their staff to different locations for integration, for setup, that sort of thing. The the one of the many benefits of Kramer Control, of course, being on the cloud is that I'm, I'm guessing that that means you don't necessarily have to send out either a team at all, or if you're sending out a team, maybe it's a, a smaller team. Can you can you sort of talk a little bit about the new reality and, and how that might play with Kramer Control? Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, Kramer Control and the, and the idea of putting your control system on the internet is, is kind of one of those newer things uh, that we're finding. But like we, like we see everywhere, uh, lots of different systems are starting to leverage the internet in all kinds of business worlds. And, you know, I think if this virus has taught us anything, it, it's, it's accelerating, um, you know, that acceptance to hey, say, hey, let's, what else can we do with the internet? You know, we're doing so much with it already. But why could, why shouldn't it be in our control system and why shouldn't it be in other places? So, you know, I think as far as acceptance is concerned, you know, this is being pushed forward quite quickly. But, yeah, I mean, we, t- we already talked about, um, you know, the ability to as a programmer do programming um, and push that programming to the room from wherever you are in the world. Uh, you also can log in. Uh, and remotely view the UI in a room uh, from wherever you are in the world, uh, just with access to the internet. So I think with those two tools, uh, again, if you're an integration company and you're sending people out on a job site, uh, do you have to send the programmer at all? You know, can, obviously some people still have to go and connect equipment and do other things, but if there's the ability uh, to allow one more, one less person to go, you know, why wouldn't you take that opportunity, I think? so I think that's a big benefit um, now moving forward just because the awareness is there. You know, it's always been a feature of our system and always something someone could have taken uh, taking advantage of. But uh, I think now in this in this you know new normal, if we call it, um, the, the awareness is just there to make those decisions. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Great. All right. Yeah, thank Talk. you for having me. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks to all of you for watching. We certainly appreciate that as well. If you like the show, please let us know. Like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified of all of the new episodes. And if you have any questions for Tommy, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. We'll make sure he gets those as well. Until next time, I'm Jeremy Ladner, and this is Kramer Today.